All right, welcome back. So today we're adding this little mini map effect here where it tracks our player's position inside of our room. And we can extend this so that it has other objects. We could make a marker for our enemies so that we know where the enemies are or treasure chests or really anything we'd want. So let's, uh, let's jump right in. Okay, welcome back. So I know I had today planned to be a boss tutorial, but we'll get to that. For now, we're gonna do kind of a quick thing that we can add to our game here that's going to, I don't know, make it kind of pop out a bit more. We're gonna be adding a mini map. So to do that, there's a few extra art assets that I'll provide a link to in the description. And I'm just gonna go to my art folder. I'm gonna create a new folder specifically for these mini map assets. And I'll explain how we're going to set this up. And believe it or not, this is going to take absolutely no coding. So that's, for those of you who often struggle with the coding parts, that should be a good idea. So we're going to use a mask, an overlay, a marker for the player, and then just a generic marker for what the room is. I'm going to pull these four assets in. And same thing as normal, whenever we pull in a new pixel art asset, I want to highlight all of them. I'm going to set their pixels per unit to be 16. And I want to set their filter to none, and compression to none, and then apply that. Now, here's how I'm going to do this. So I already have this set up so that I have distinct rooms. So each room is going to have a room blank object behind it. and to make sure that it doesn't interfere with the way that we normally see the game, I'm going to give it a positive uh, Z position, which is going to make it appear behind everything so that you won't see it. So in room one, I'm going to create a new empty game object. So I want a empty. And this is going to be our mini map um, marker, I guess. That's a good name for it. I'm going to add to this a a uh, sprite renderer and I'm going to set that to be the room blank. Now right now you see this is up here. I'm going to move it to be in the middle of the room which for me would put it at 12.5, negative 12.5 and then I'm going to set its scale. I think it needs to be 8.5 by 8.5 for my version. And You can play around with it. You can use the blue handles if you want to to make it look correct the way you want it to. I'm going to set its Z position to, let's actually set this one to 2. Now I'm going to do something similar for the player. So I'm going to go up to my player here, and I'm going to open up the prefab. And in the player prefab, I'm going to turn off this lighting effect, and I'm going to add a new empty child. And this empty child is going to be the minimap marker. And this is also going to get a sprite. So sprite renderer and this is going to be this little player head I made. Now I'm going to scale this up quite a bit 5x5. Five five. I might even want it a little bit bigger but again I'm going to put it on a Z position. This is going to have a Z position of 1 and I'm also going to change the layer that this is on in the minimap marker. So up here in layer I'm going to choose to add a new layer and I'm going to call this new layer Minimap. Now my minimap marker is currently on the player layer. I'm going to move it to minimap. So this should save everything. And if I jump back over, you won't see the player head because the player head is actually behind the world there. I'm going to go to my minimap marker, which I put in room one. And I'm also going to put that on the minimap layer. Now just to make sure I won't ever see it, my main camera has a culling mask. Currently it's showing everything. I'm going to make sure it's not showing the minimap. And that'll change it from everything to mixed. Now I'm going to create a new camera. And this camera is going to be a child of the player. So again I'm going to do this in the prefab here since it's going to apply to everything else that uses this prefab. So on my player I'm going to create... I always forget where cameras are. Oh there it is, camera. And we're going to call this minimap camera. For my culling mask here, I want to display nothing, and then I'm only going to turn on the minimap stuff. 
I'm going to set this to orthographic instead of perspective, and I'm going to increase the size quite a bit. So let's take our size actually to, say, 15. It's not too bad. All right, now I'm going to go back to my main scene here. And the way that we're going to do this is we're going to use something called a render texture. And a render texture allows us to take everything from that second camera, from that minimap camera, and have it display onto a render texture. So, to do uh, for rendering path, no. Okay, so yeah, um, target texture. So we don't currently have a target texture, so let's make one. And since I already have all this minimap stuff in here, instead of making a new textures folder, I'm just going to make my render texture in here. So I'm going to go to create. I'm going to create a render texture. And I'm going to call this minimap texture. And I don't have to change any of this right now. I'm going to go back to look at my minimap camera. And, oh, almost out of power. And I'm going to apply my minimap texture as my target render texture. Now, if I take a look here, you can see that it's displaying what my player would see. Now, to have that show up in game, I'm going to go back to my scene view, back to my main view, and I'm going to use my canvas. So on my canvas, I'm going to add a new object. So I'm going to right-click, go to UI. I'm going to choose Raw Image. And it needs to be a raw image instead of a regular image so that we can have it displayed to a texture. So for the texture, I'm going to give it my minimap texture. Already, you can see kind of our minimap show up. I'm going to put this down in the corner. OK, so I want to juice this up and make it look a little bit better here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my canvas. And I'm going to add a couple new images. So I'm going to go to UI. I'm going to add a plain image. And this is going to be an overlay that's going to sit on top of everything. And then I'll add another one, which is going to act as a mask. So UI uh, image. And then I'm going to rename this to mask. And I brought in a couple of pieces of art here to use for both of them. So the mask is going to get the minimap mask. And the overlay is going to get the minimap overlay. Now, um, I want the overlay to be the bottom one so that it renders on top. And I'm just going to kind of grab them both here. So grab both of them. Oops, I guess I just have to do one at a time. So I'll grab my mask um, and move that on top of my little mini map. And let's actually let's resize this a bit. Let's make it a little bit bigger. So let's set our width to, say, 140, and our height to 140. Now I'm going to take my raw image. I'm going to make it a child of the mask. And then on the mask, I'm going to add a new component, which is just a mask. I'm also going to take my raw image, and I'm going to scale this up a bit to match. And you can see already that as I'm scaling it up, it uh, cuts off outside of where it would render inside here. Now I'm going to take my overlay and place this on top, and I'm going to need to scale this up as well. So I'm just going to place it like that. And there we go. I probably want to move my minimap camera out a little bit. So my minimap camera, I'm going to increase my size to kind of zoom it back out. And there we go. We have ourselves a little mini-map that works already, already, already. So if I hit play, we'll be able to see our representation of our player moving around in the world, but we won't see the, uh, the mini-map markers that are there. So this was a pretty simple and easy way to add a mini-map as soon as Unity decides it wants to work. Maybe. Don't think I broke anything, but we'll find out in a moment. All right, cool. So you can see that as our player moves around, our minimap moves around down there too. And that's because I made the minimap camera a child of the player. Now you could 
increase your size if you want that to be. You could even make it so that you have, sorry for that weird cut. So for you, no time at all has passed. For me, it's <laughs> the next day. Uh, so anyway, as I was saying, you could extend this by having a different color background. So like right now I'm using this green background on this one, but you could have say a gray background on a room you haven't entered yet. And then when you do enter the room, when the observer object makes everything active again, it could also change the color of the room. You could also extend this by having the NPCs have their own little object so that the NPCs could register on your minimap. So you would do that the same way. You'd make a little marker for them, put it on the z-axis of one, and then have it be a child of the NPC so it follows the NPC. You could do something similar with treasure chests and enemies so that you can see where the treasure chests and the enemies are. Um, yeah, you could do it with uh, maybe important things or quest markers, stuff like that. So this little mini map took absolutely no code. It's really extensible. And yeah, I think it's it's kind of neat. It's kind of a cool thing to add. It's not something that I think you'd see in very many games, at least very many tutorials like this. So, all right. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to ask. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter if I don't want to post new videos. You can join my Discord. You can follow me on, um, I was about to say Instagram, uh, Twitter. Discord's really great. There's um, a person, shout out to Power on my Discord, who made something similar to this, only in 3D. So there was like an, an angle to it. It looked really cool. But yeah, I hope everybody out there has themselves a wonderful day. If you enjoyed this video, consider giving a like, subscribing to the channel, or telling a friend who might be interested. Also, please consider following me on Patreon. For as little as a dollar a month, you can earn access to tangible rewards, like early access to videos, backer-only videos and series, polls for future topics, streams, and even individual tutoring sessions. You can find a link to that in the description. And as always, have yourselves a wonderful day.